morning, friends. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm Frankie, and this is the Think Tank. So on this video, I would like to cover Alex Murdahl once again and share some information on the car data that came out or the vehicle data that came out the other day. And I want to talk about his wife and son finding bags of medications. So let's check this out. We'll start with um, the medications, I suppose. So what happened is that his wife found the meds and his son messaged him basically and said that they need to talk. Prosecutor, prosecutors did rest their case after questioning more than 60 witnesses, which to me, I was rather surprised because there was over 250 people on the witness list originally. So we do know that Alec is a prominent lawyer in that area. Prosecutors trying to convict Alex Murdoch of the unaliving of his wife and son said Friday that the two victims had discovered bags of medication, Mr. Murdoch's computer bag, a month before the unalivings. So this is one of the reasons that they have as a possible motive. When you get here, we have to talk, said his son, Paul. This was on May or in May of 2021. And it was a message to his father saying, mom found several bags of your meds in your computer bag. When there's an attic in the house, you know what? People will keep tabs. So the message bolsters the prosecution's argument that at the time of the unalivings, there literally was a perfect storm. So Murdoch, who is 54, threatened to, it had been threatened to expose his embezzlements of millions of dollars from his law firm and clients. So this had just been exposed, the date of this unaliving. So we do know that the prosecution rested its case Friday. We do know that they went through over 60 witnesses. And um, basically that that was more than the beginning of a downfall. He's saying that he had a 20 year addiction over the past three weeks. Prosecutors with the South Carolina Attorney General's Office have outlined their theory of the grisly crime in which Mr. Murdoch's wife, Maggie, who is 52, and Paul, 22, were SHOT near the dog kennels. So this is some of the mapping. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit here. This is some of the mapping and timing of... Um, that night when he got home when he got to the kennels when he went to his mother's how long he was there how long he stopped for everything you can think of has been put on this graph they have elicited testimony that mr murdoch's financial thefts were on the verge of being exposed around the time of the unalivings friday they also showed a text that mr murdoch sent to a close friend four days before these unalivings in which he said he needed to take out an extra $600,000 in credit. On May 6th, the day that his son Paul told him about this discovery, Mr. Murdoch's wife also searched the internet for the markings on these pills looking up a description that did match some oxycodone pills. The next morning, Murdoch texted his wife saying, I am very sorry that I do this to you. I love you. Mm -hmm. On May 26, Ms. Murdoch searched another pill description, and the prosecution has highlighted a series of inconsistencies that Alec Murdoch's statements to the police and pointed to phone and car location data, which we're going to talk about. I'm looking forward to that because that just basically puts everything together. But 
Prosecutors played a video taken by his son that captured Mr. Murdoch's voice at the crime scene in the minutes before these unalivings, despite him saying over and over and over that he was not there. Well, the digital information is actually saying something totally different. What the prosecution has not shown is any direct evidence. This is basically going to be, um, well, I don't know. Do you, do you call these phones direct evidence or not? Or does this still come under the, um, oh my goodness, you know, that clause. <laughs> so anyways, the week the defense lawyers tried to shift attention to other possible suspects, noting that an unusual man's DNA was found under Maggie Murdoch's fingernails that she had just had done. We also suggest that the police should have looked into the DRUG dealers that Mr. Murdoch was buying his meds from, which he said he did by writing large checks, sometimes as much as $60,000 in a week. Now, I don't know how a person could possibly consume. He was saying it was a $50,000 a week habit, which broke down into seven days. You're roughly 90, 90 of these pills a day. I think that's called an overdose. So, um, Let's see here. Still hanging over the trial is the question of whether Mr. Murdoch himself will testify. Well, we all know what the saying is as far as that gives himself a uh, not all that bright of a client. With so many witnesses and so much technical data, they will, the jury, have a lot of information to sift through. They're not able to take notes when they're doing this, it's going to all be based on memory. Um, they are allowed, I do believe, I don't know if it's state to state, but you can generally ask for certain parts of um, their statements to come back to their jurors' room so that they can conclusively decide in their minds what things are meaning. And so they are saying that in this case, it's basically going to be determined as to the closing ar arguments as to who basically describes this um, situation the best, who is more believable, who can put things together and make them make sense. So since the unalivings, Alec Murdoch has also been criminally charged with stealing about 8.8 .8 million from a range of victims, everything from clients, friends, uh, employees, business, Yes. So several prosecution witnesses testified about Mr. Murdoch's behavior after the unalivings. His mother's caregiver, Shelly Smith, testified that he visited for about 20 minutes. But Murdoch said that he had been there for at least 30 or 40 and that he did this quite often. And then we also hear that it's actually not that frequent. His uh, basically his um, alibi in his mind is that he dozed off on the couch while this was happening. He said he then got up and drove directly to his mother ho mother's house shortly before nine. So I'm going to leave this part and we're going to jump right over and take a look at something else that I was able to find. So I hope y'all are having a great day. Minus two in the Rockies right now. We're supposed to start getting cold. So this is, I was telling you, new data had come in. So this is car data that places Alec at the spot where his wife's phone was dumped. Let's take a look at this. See what we've got. I'm going to show 523. And this is a text from 
from which person to which person? So this is going to be from Paul Murdaugh, and it's going to be to, it says voicemail. That's going to refer to Alex. This is obtained from his phone. It's going to be the owner. So that's going to be Paul to Alex. So what's the date? The date is going to be uh, May 6, 2021 at 10.52, 13 a.m. And what does it say? It says, I am still an EB because when you get here, we need to talk. Mom found several bags of pills in your computer bag. This is again from Paul to Alex on May 6. May 6. So newly obtained car data has placed Alec Murdoch at the spot where his wife's phone was later found and dumped before he quickly sped away from the scene. They literally have the data as to how fast he was going, when he slowed down, if he stopped, if the vehicle went into another gear, like you name it. The data handed over by General Motors just last week actually showed the disgraced legal dynasty heir left the family home on his way in his, sorry, 2021 Chevy Suburban at 9.07 p.m. 9.07. Just minutes after he allegedly uh, shot and unalived his wife and son. You know, sometimes it's just hard to even spit out. The data handed over by General Motors just last week. Okay, one minute later, while driving at a speed of 42 miles per hour, his car passed the very spot along Moselle Road where Maggie's cell phone was recovered the following day. After passing that spot, his car then picked up speed, reaching 52 miles per hour just one minute later at 9.09. .09. After passing the location, the defendant's vehicle accelerates more sled agent Peter Rudofsky testified. He had a lot of information, guys. Jurors had previously learned that Maggie's cell phone had been found uh, by investigators the following day, as we say, dumped on the side of the road. So what the prosecutors are saying is that Alec took her phone after unaliving her and tossed it out of his moving vehicle on his way to his mom's house to basically get himself alibied. Then at 9.07, the screen had gone on and off as though it was in someone's hand. So that is Maggie's phone. The screen did not come on again until 9.31 p.m. when the phone received an incoming call. So Lieutenant Dove did testify that an orientation change can only be recorded if the screen is on meaning the phone would have to have been thrown from the car between those times and no change would have registered. Now, the new car data places Murdoch at the location the phone was dumped and a new revelation came as Agent Rudofsky told the witness, witnesses, hmm, took the witness stand in Colton County Courthouse in South Carolina Friday, becoming the last witness for the prosecution. He told the jurors that his role in the investigation was to put all the data together into a timeline showing exactly what happened that day. So this here is where the vehicle, so well, this is where the phone was found. This is him leaving Moselle, slowing down, slowing down, dump it and gone. Agent Radowski revealed that General Motors had contacted law enforcement last week to hand over a trove of data from Mr. Murdoch's 2021 Chevy Suburban. So it did have never seen before speed and GPA, GPS data. The information, sorry, this came after another law enforcement official had testified about the movements of the SUV. Jurors were shown a very detailed map of Alex car movements covering his speed and location at specific points of that day. Another bombshell. He, re he revealed that less than 20 seconds passed from the moment that Alex's vehicle got to the kennels and called 911. So he is claiming that he went to 
both his wife and his son checked them for um, a pulse any sign of life and then went back to his vehicle again he's saying that he did all of this in 20 seconds during the 911 call and in interviews Alec gave in the aftermath of the unalivings he claimed that he had touched both his wife and son's bodies to check for signs of life before calling 911 so based on information he did all of that in 20 seconds i might have said minutes earlier seconds he also claimed that when he moved Paul, his cell phone popped out of his back pocket. I don't know about that. And he said he picked it up and then put it down on his son's butt. There does show that the phone had moved. It almost sounds like there's a possibility that Alec, possibility that Alec was trying to get into that phone to delete some messages in there because Alec, we have found out, has removed lots of information, but there's some stuff he just couldn't get rid of. And that stuff is biting him in the butt. So the data shows that he showed up at the kennels at 10.05.57. Mr. Murdoch made the 911 call at 10.06.14, 17 seconds after getting there. I don't know how this does. Does he feel that sorry for himself? So he also testified that the data shows Murdoch left the family home at 12.07, drove to work, arrived there at 2.21. And it also gives the speeds and uh, accelerations during that trip. So it also says that Alec Murdoch then drove, sorry, do, 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 do. Drove to his parents' home at 9.07 p.m., arriving at 9.22. He left 21 minutes later, 9.43. So again, contradicting claims during many interviews that he stayed there for about 45 minutes. And if you remember, the caregiver, here we are, Shelly Smith, who was taking care of Libby, who is his mother, said, uh, 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 from October 2019, previously told jurors that Murdoch stayed only 20 minutes, but he did say to her, to her fairly forth, forth, <laughs> forthfully, forcefully that he was there for 40 or 45. While casting doubt on his timeline on the events, data also reveals a change in behavior in the time from the unalivings Notably, the speeds he was driving on his journey to and from the law enforcement. Now it's giving you all the different speeds as far as that goes. And also basically discounts his finding them. Also discounts him not being down there at all at those kennels. Things do pile up, don't they? On the night of June 7th, Paul placed a call on his cell phone to a friend, Rogan Gibson, lasting four minutes, followed by a second call. And the second call was the last incoming communication that we, he was able to have through Pulse cell phone. So there was a video taken at that point, and you can very, very well hear three voices in that video. Prosecutors claim that Paul was unalive first at 8.50, and Maggie moments later, their cell phones had no activity from 849 onward, except for basically possibly being moved. The prosecution theory is that Murdoch unalived Maggie and Paul by the dog kennels of the family's sprawling estate in Islington in order to distract from a string of alleged financial crimes. He is facing life in prison for these unalivings, and he has pled not guilty. So, let me get over here. So, I'm going to be curious. Defense starts Tuesday morning, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So, a person's going to want to be watching that. I don't know if I'm going to stream or not. I've been trying these updates, and this way I'm able to cover, cover other 
cases that I am interested in as well. So is there anything else I would like to add? When he got to his mother's place, instead of going in, stopping at the house on the drive pad, he went behind and kind of into some bushes and stayed back there for a couple minutes and then back and then went into the house. I don't know if they've searched, have searched thoroughly, but we have to remember that there was also months before he was considered a suspect and any searches were done. So basically saying that Alec had a lot of time, if he is indeed guilty, of eliminating anything that might get him in trouble. So I think that with what happened yesterday in court, Friday, mm -mm -mm, things are looking a little rough for Mr. Alec Murdoch at this moment. In my opinion, uh, prosecution made a lot of headway yesterday. So let's wait and see what Tuesday morning's going to bring us. I'm, I'm ready. Bring it on. <laughs> so guys, that is my update. Thank you very much for being here with me. I absolutely appreciate you all. And I'll see you in the next one.